Prince Edward Island is a Canadian province consisting of an island of the same name. The island is part of Mi'kma'ki, the lands of the Mi'kmaq people. Explored by Europeans in the 16th century, the French claimed all of the lands of the Maritimes in 1604 and French colonists arrived in 1720. By conquest, the British claimed all of the lands including Prince Edward Island in 1763. It became the British colony of St. John Island in 1769 and joined the Canadian Confederation on July 1, 1873. Apequot Prince Edward Island was first inhabited by the Mi'kmaq people, who have lived in the region for several thousand years. They named the island Apequot, the pronunciation of which was changed to Abeguet by the Europeans, meaning cradle on the waves. The Mi'kmaq mythology is that the island was formed by the Great Spirit placing some dark red clay which was shaped as a crescent on the pink waters. There are two Mi'kmaq First Nation reserves on Apequot today. <inaudible> French colony In 1604, France claimed the lands of the Maritimes and established the French colony of Acadia. After the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, the French colony of Île Royale, the island was called Île Saint-Jean. The first French settlers arrived in 1719 on a ship wrecked at Naufrage. The settlers lived primarily at Port La Joy and Havre Saint Pierre Street, Peter's Harbour. At Port La Joy, there was an administrative unit and a garrison detached from Loisburg, where sat the government for both Île Royale and Île Saint-Jean. While new settlements were established along the Rivière du Nord-Est and at but Havre Saint-Pierre remained the largest population throughout the French occupation of the island. <laughs> Battle at Port La Joy After the siege of Loisburg during King George's War, the New Englanders also captured Île Saint-Jean Prince Edward Island. An English detachment landed at Port La Joy. Under the command of Joseph de Pont du Vivier, the French had a garrison of 20 French troops at Port La Joy. The troops fled and New Englanders burned the capital to the ground. Du Vivier and the 20 men retreated up the Northeast River, Hillsborough River pursued by the New Englanders until the French troops received reinforcements from the Acadian militia and the Mi'kmaq. The French troops and their allies were able to drive the New Englanders to their boats, nine New Englanders killed, wounded, or made prisoner. The New Englanders took six Acadian hostages, who would be executed if the Acadians or Mi'kmaq rebelled against New England control. The New England troops left for Loisburg. Duvivier and his twenty troops left for Quebec. After the fall of Loisburg, the resident French population of Ile Royale were deported to France. The Acadians of Ile Saint Jean lived under the threat of deportation for the remainder of the war. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Battle at Port La Joy, 1746. The New Englanders had a force of two warships and 200 soldiers stationed at Port La Joy. To regain Acadia, Ramazé was sent from Quebec to the region. Upon arriving at Chinecto, he sent Boishebert to Ile Saint Jean on a reconnaissance to assess the size of the New England force. After Boishebert returned, Ramazé sent Joseph Michel Lagarder de Quasel et de Montesson along with over 500 men, 200 of whom were Mi'kmaq, to Port La Joie. In July 1746, the battle happened near York River. Montesson and his troops killed 40 New Englanders and captured the rest. Montesson was commended for having distinguished himself in his first independent command. Topic: <inaudible> Acadian Exodus. During Father Le Loutre's war, at the beginning of the Acadian Exodus from mainland Nova Scotia, many Acadians migrated to the island. The population increased dramatically from 735 to approximately 3000. New settlements began at Point Prime, Ildon, Bedek, and other places. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Expulsion of the Acadians. The British captured Port Royal, the capital of Acadia in 1710, and established Nova Scotia in the peninsular part of Acadia. Over the next 45 years, the Acadians refused to sign an unconditional oath of allegiance to Britain. 
During this time period, Acadians and Mi'kmaq participated in various militia operations against the British and maintained vital supply lines to the French fortress of Loisburg and Fort Beausejour. During the French and Indian War, the North American theater of the Seven Years' War, the British sought both to neutralize any military threat Acadians posed, and to interrupt the vital supply lines Acadians provided to Loisburg by deporting Acadians from the region. Once the first wave of the expulsion of the Acadians began in mainland Nova Scotia, Acadians arrived on the island as refugees. After the Siege of Loisburg, 1758, the second wave of the expulsion began. On the eve of 1758, the population had grown to almost 5,000. Commander Rollo accomplished the Ile Saint Jean campaign. One of the most dramatic removals was of Noel Douarin and his family from Ile Don. <laughs> <laughs> British colony The British claimed dominion over all of the Maritimes in 1763. A separate colony on Prince Edward, named St. John's Island", was established on June 28, 1769, after determined lobbying by the island's settlers. <inaudible> Raid on Charlottetown 1775. During the American Revolutionary War, Charlottetown was raided in 1775 by a pair of American-employed privateers. Two armed pirate schooners, Franklin and Hancock, from Beverly, Massachusetts, made prisoner of the acting Governor Phillips Colbeck, and Justice of the Peace, and Surveyor General Thomas Wright, at Charlottetown, on advice given them by some Pictou residents after they had taken eight fishing vessels in the gut of Canso. During and after the war, the colony's efforts to attract exiled Loyalist refugees from the rebellious American colonies met with some success. Walter Patterson's brother, John Patterson, one of the original grantees of land on the island, was a temporarily exiled loyalist and led efforts to persuade others to come. The new British colony of St. John's Island, also known as the Island of St. John, was settled by adventurous Georgian families looking for elegance on the sea. Prince Edward Island became a fashionable retreat in the 18th century for British nobility. Topic. New name In 1798, Great Britain changed the colony's name from St. John's Island to Prince Edward Island to distinguish it from similar names in the Atlantic, such as the cities of St. John and St. John's. The colony's new name honoured the fourth son of King George III, Prince Edward Augustus, the Duke of Kent 1767 who was then commanding British troops in Halifax. Prince Edward was the father of Queen Victoria. The majority of the colony was owned by absentee British landlords such as the shipping magnate Samuel Cunard. Protracted disputes, which lasted until Confederation, arose between the colonial office, tenants and the absentee landlords who owned most of it. <laughs> Canadian Confederation In September 1864, Prince Edward Island hosted the Charlottetown Conference, which was the first meeting in the process leading to the Articles of Confederation and the creation of Canada in 1867. Prince Edward Island did not find the terms of union favourable and balked at joining in 1867, choosing to remain part of the nation of Great Britain and Ireland. In the late 1860s, the colony examined various options, including the possibility of becoming a discrete dominion unto itself, as well as entertaining delegations from the United States, who were interested in Prince Edward Island joining the United States of America. In the early 1870s, the colony began construction of a railway and, frustrated by Great Britain's colonial office, began negotiations with the United States. In 1873, Prime Minister Sir John A. Macdonald, anxious to thwart American expansionism and facing the distraction of the Pacific scandal, negotiated for Prince Edward Island to join Canada. The federal government of Canada assumed the colony's railway debts and agreed to finance a buyout of the last of the colony's absentee landlords to free the island of leasehold tenure and from any new migrants entering the island. Prince Edward Island entered Confederation on July 1, 1873. The problem of absentee landowners was subsequently addressed by the passage of the Land Purchase Act, 1875. As a result of having hosted the inaugural meeting of Confederation, the Charlottetown Conference, Prince Edward Island presents itself as the birthplace of Confederation, 
With several buildings, a ferry vessel, and the Confederation Bridge, the longest bridge over ice covered waters in the world, using the term Confederation in many ways. The most prominent building in the province with this name is the Confederation Center of the Arts, presented as a gift to Prince Edward Islanders by the ten provincial governments and the federal government upon the centenary of the Charlottetown Conference, in Charlottetown as a national monument to the Fathers of Confederation. See also History of Charlottetown List of National Historic Sites of Canada in Prince Edward Island Topic. Further reading Campbell, Duncan 1875. History of Prince Edward Island, also History of Prince Edward Island at Project Gutenberg Harvey D.C. The French Regime in Prince Edward Island Yale UP, 1926. Livingston, Ross. Responsible Government in Prince Edward Island, A Triumph of Self-Government under the Crown 1931, online Whitcomb, Dr. Ed. A Short History of Prince Edward Island. Ottawa. From Sea to Sea Enterprises, 2010. ISBN 978-0-9865967-1-1. 56 pp. References <references>